So in this video, we're going to show how to use your keyboard keys to move things around. Um, and this is the first time we've kind of looked at movement before. Um, so the first thing we need to do is think about um, how does your computer look for the keys? And that's something called a function event. And we use event.key to look for the keys. So the first thing I need to do, and we'll get a little bit more into that next, is I'm going to create variables that are checking to see which arrow key is being pressed. So I'm going to create a variable called key left, and I'm going to set it equal to false because when I start this program, I am not pressing the left arrow key. So on your keyboard, I'm specifically talking about the four arrow keys. So we're going to continue this, and we're assuming we're not pressing any of the arrow keys. And this would work for the letter keys, like the W key or the D key. Um, I could do the same thing. So we're just on this program talking about the left, the right and the up and the down arrows. Now, in order to do, to check for these things, because any sort of program we're using a controller, you know, any sort of video game, your, your um, program is constantly checking to see if the buttons are being pressed. So what we do for that, that's another event handler. So we're checking the thing we're going to be clicking on is screen one. And we're checking to see if a key is being pressed down. So instead of click, we use key down. And this is a special type of function called an event. And an event is basically always checking to see if something's happening specifically on your keyboard. So this is, it's an event handler, but we have to have this word event in here. So the first thing we're going to check, we're going to say if event.key equals up. And this is nothing I did. This means I am checking to see if the up key is being pressed. So this is built into JavaScript. It's very similar in other programming languages. I'm saying if the up button, so this word up specifically means the up arrow. I could, if I did the letter A, it would mean the A key on my computer. So if that's true, if I'm pressing the up arrow, I'm going to take my variable, which goes with it. So that's key up. And I'm going to set that equal to true. So while I'm pressing, if I'm pressing the up button, I'm going to set my variable that goes with up to true. Now we're just going to continue this. So we need a bracket here. I'm not sure why that didn't copy. And we're going to do the same exact thing for the down arrow, the left arrow, and the right arrow. So else if event key is down, we're going to set key down to true. If it is, the words they use are normal words. So that means your left arrow on your computer, event.key equals left means you're pressing the left arrow. We're going to do key left is true. And then lastly, I missed the else if here. The reason I'm using else ifs is just because it's faster for the program to read it. Um, you can't press in this in this way two arrow keys at the same time and have it work. So if the up key is already pressed, it doesn't have to check all the other ones. It just makes it a little faster to run. So my last one, if we're pressing the right button, we're making the key right true. So this is just setting up that when I press the keys, I'm going to set my variable to true. I'm going to copy this and do the opposite. So now we're going to do screen one key up. So that means if you have the key pressed and you pick your finger up. Um, so if I stop pressing the button or key up, then I want to set this back to false. So I'm going to set all of these back to false because when I stop pressing the button, I want the cat to stop moving in that direction. So if you're creating a program like this, this is a piece of code you would want. If you wanted other things to do things, like if you wanted the space bar to do something, you can just look up online what you call it. It is space here. You could make that do something else. So, But that code is the same, and it's a setup process to get ready to code the rest of it.
So I am just going to start the next piece of it, but I'm going to do most of that in a different video. Um, so here I'm going to use those values. So if key up is true, then I'm going to make something happen from that. So I'm going to take an event handler. All of this program is going to run when I press the start button. Um, we're going to hide this start button and get the cat moving. So this is start button. This is more of stuff you should recognize down here. Okay, these are very new in terms of what function event means or anything like that. So from here, we're going to show the cat element. Just to show you when I run this, the cat is gone. When I press start, I want the cat to show and the start button to go away. So show element. Cat image is what it's called. I'm going to show that little cat. And then I'm going to hide element. And I named this. Button. And then just like we had the other video with the timed loop, um, I want to bring in one of those timed loops because I want to be moving the cat over time. So I'm going to pull in a time loop. which is in control, and I could type that. Now, this is happening every second, which we will go back to, but when you're trying to do movement, if you imagine something only moving every second, it's gonna look super choppy. So 20 milliseconds or you know, 1 50th of a second is often good for movement, and you can play around that with, with whatever you're making. Now, currently, I don't want the cat to move at all. So when we start it, the cat's just gonna be still. I only wanna move the cat when I press those buttons. So I'm gonna set up two variables. I am gonna use them as local because the only time that this is gonna matter is inside this time loop function. And then the other thing I need to do, so I'm picking velocities, speeds for how the cat moves. And then I'm also going to pick the position of the cat. So its current X position is important to figure out how it's gonna move. So I'm gonna get the X position of the cat image. And then I also need to get its Y position. And here I need get X position and get Y position for those functions. So I haven't used these, so I have the yellow triangle. So, so far what we have is we set up this process so the keys will work on my computer to do stuff once I um, write commands down here to do that. When I press the start button, I am going to turn on the cat image, turn off the start button, and I'm starting out with a starting velocity and then the starting position. So wherever the cat is, it's going to read this position from where it starts from. We'll start to get the cat to move based on the keys in the next video.